everyone. Welcome to another broadcast of Inspired to Worship Through the Arts. Today in the studio, we have Apostle DeMonte Edmonds, who is here with us on today. And we're going to be talking about prophetic writing. There's a worship arts conference that's going to be coming up March 31st through April the 1st. And for the next six broadcasts, we're going to be talking about the prophetic streams of worship. Um, there are six different broadcasts that's going to focus on um, visual arts, performing arts, writing, song, dancing, and prophetic declarations and decrees. And the Lord has just uh, opened this avenue up for us to uh, get some insight of what's this conference all about. And so you're going to be hearing various uh, facilitators coming into the studio and they're going to just be uh, releasing the heart of passion that God has given them so gracefully to be able to share with us on this morning. And so once again we have Apostle Edmonds. Why don't you greet the listeners on this morning? Praise the Lord. It's wonderful to be here with you today and have an opportunity to share on this great station. Amen. Tell us a little bit about yourself this morning. Well, I'm Apostle DeMonte Edmonds. I re reside here in Virginia, and I've been in ministry for over 14 years, pastored for four and a half Amen. years. Yes, yes. That's such a blessing to have you. So you bring a wealth of knowledge on the prophetic with you on this morning. And so let's just dive straight in. You know, I'm hungry for the Word of God on today, and I want to hear what's on the hearts of the prophets. And so today, he's going to just introduce us into what we call prophetic writing. And I don't want you to get spooked out when we use the word prophetic, but, but what we're actually just saying is that he writes under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Would you say so? <laughs> yes, at times God anoints me to write under his inspiration. Amen, amen. So just tell us just a little bit about your ministry that God has given you. Well, we pastored for four and a half years, mm -hmm. and then God moved us into a ministry, international ministry, traveling ministry, also working with churches and leaders, developing leaders, uh, really equipping the saints for the work of the ministry. And so we've been to 18 countries in the last three years wow. sharing the gospel and equipping leaders. Amen. 18 countries in three years. That's imparting into the lives of over 18 countries. That's amazing. That's amazing. and such a blessing. And so um, just share with us on today, we might have someone who's listening who God is speaking to, and God is giving them vision, He's giving them dreams, and they have a journal. And they may have several journals. And then they're realizing that they're writing everything that God has given them. But it ends there. They don't know what to do with their writings. Let's start there. What would you say? Well, I would say that's something that I personally have experienced where God was giving me so much revelation, so much insight, but I didn't have the, 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 the vehicles or the avenues to share some of the revelation. The first thing I believe God wants to build your confidence. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because if you're not confident, then you're going to have difficulty uh, really propagating the message and the revelation God has given you. So sometimes the private writings are just to stay private. And as you see things come to pass and as God brings confirmation to them, it builds your confidence over time. And so practice makes perfect. Okay, that's, that's really good. I think confidence is where we lack um, the necessities because we're not really confident as to whether this should be a public release or whether this should be something that we need to keep personal. We need to keep it in our journal. And, you know, some may be young and started off writing in diaries, and diaries is a reflection of your inner thoughts. And, and as an adult, we have moved from diaries to journals. And it's a, um, a just a, I would say, us writing what the Holy Spirit is giving us through visions, through dreams. Maybe it's through um, inspiration from our leaders, our mentors, or maybe just some type of ref, um, reflection that God has given us through his written word. And so... Um, what would you say is that vehicle that is needed, that, that tool that is needed to move from lack of confidence 
lack of experience to moving under the action of the anointing. Amen. Well, as your confidence increases, your faith increases uh, with it. I think really having good mentors, people that can help direct you on the right path, people that can coach you, people that have done it uh, at some degree of capacity, they really can push you mm -hmm. forward. They also can give you some insight on what to hold back, what to keep private, and what to share publicly. Mm -hmm. Apostle, would you also say that prayer is essential, that that quiet time, that the time of meditation, that time of just sitting back and remaining quiet before the Lord. Would you say that that's also needed? It's needed on a day-to-day -day basis because mm -hmm. the Lord would give you so many answers. Yes, no, red light, green light. Uh, he'll just give you, you know, what to do. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important too. Like you said, those red light, green lights, those yellow lights, wait right here. Yes. He hasn't definitely said no. He hasn't definitely said yes, but sometimes he calls us to just rest, just be still and rest. Um, I think that that's, that's going to be significant and moving in the prophetic writings. Now, you've had some experience with um, publishing your writings. That's taken it to a totally different dimension. Now you have where people are uh, not just writing in a journal, but now you want this thing to become public, and one of the um, publications that you've had the opportunity of being a part of is the Elijah List. Now, the Elijah List is a very well-known um, publication where they subscribe over 240-some thousand um, people to actually read your prophecies. That could be kind of scary for somebody who's just getting started. <laughs> so just tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> well, I think, it, yes, it can be scary. Also, I think it can cause pride. And so God will mm. test the person in the private arenas first before he brings them publicly. Uh, but especially when you're giving prophetic words, you have to have a track record of accuracy. And that takes mm. time, sometimes years, to build that you have credibility and reputation with the Christian community that you're not perfect but you have a degree of accuracy and integrity. And so I believe the humility, the accuracy, and the integrity is what calls not just the Elijah List, but other publications and um, organizations and institutions that have desired to work with our ministry to uh, put some level of confidence in us. Amen, amen. Um, I like what you said. There needs to be some type of track record of accuracy. There needs to be a time of you just paying attention to hearing the voice of God. What are you seeing in the spirit realm? What are you hearing in the spirit realm? Take time to document it. Write it down. Wait on it. That, that waiting period is crucial in the body of Christ because sometimes God would give us this prophetic word, this prophetic writing, even a prophetic song, and we want to immediately release it. And what yes. God is saying is, wait. Rest. Going back to that yellow light you were talking about. Stay right here. Meditate on it. He said, meditate on my words, what? Day and night. Hide my words in your heart. These are things so that we can have that confidence. We can build that confidence. And, you know, I can just testify as to when God wanted me to, to even do radio broadcast evangelism, you know, I've sat on this thing for over a year. I waited <laughs> to just, you know, I really wanted that green light. I don't want to move in a yellow light. Yes. Definitely don't want to move in a red light. <laughs> Praise <laughs> the Lord. You're right. <laughs> so, you know, how what would you share with someone who may be, you know, challenged in that area of really knowing that it's a green light? One of the things that I personally always look for is to check the motivation of my heart. Mm. If you're desiring to be seen, to be known, to be promoted, to be celebrated, then you may want to wait until God can really deal with your heart and your motivations are pure. And so I've had opportunities that I turned down just because I felt internally that it would, that it would be more self-gratification mm -hmm. than glorification of God. And so checking the heart motives. Also, something comes into your heart called peace. Yes. It says, let the peace yes. of God umpire, rule your heart. So when that peace comes in, it's a good sign that now is the time. Amen, amen. And I'm just reflecting on Isaiah 27 um, that talks about how God has ordained peace. 
He's ordained peace in our life. And if you're not in a place of peace, that's also a flag. It's not time. That's right. It's not time to release it. Now, it's not saying that, you know, as you say, you're not perfect. You're not going to always have um, this confidence and this, you know, holy boldness that's going to rise up. Yes. On you, you know, but you're going to have some times where you have butterflies. (laughs) You're going to be nervous. But what's important is that you stay humble, that you humble yourself through humility. Now, I'm also reminded in Matthew chapter 4, where Jesus was tested in the wilderness. And when he was tested in the wilderness, and the adversary continued to come at him, Jesus continued to say, it is written. It is written. It is written. Which shows us the importance of writing things down. Wow. What would you say to that? How would you reflect upon that scripture? That's a powerful scripture. Unfor- well, I won't say unfortunately. Fortunately and unfortunately, I actually lived that. People ask for the secret of our ministry or they're looking for some one-two method or methodology. I feel like personally God built me in the wilderness for over seven and a half years. Mm. Everything was in private. Doors wouldn't open. I spent hours a day with God in the Word and prayer consistently. And so the wilderness built everything that God has given us. That was the foundation, spending time, intimacy with God and trusting Him in the wilderness. But we wouldn't have the written word of God now if the prophets of old did not write mm, amen. The, what was spoken to them and revealed to them by our Father God in heaven. And so your writings can outlive your ministry and your life. Yes, that's, that's powerful and that's key. What's powerful is during those dry seasons in our life, during those wilderness experiences, it's important that you stay in close commune with the Father. Yes. It's important that you continue to have the ears to hear what the Spirit is saying and you write and you do what God is telling you to do. Whether it is in private, whether it's in the wilderness, whether it's in a dry time of your life. And like you say, you, the enemy will make you think that doors are not opening. Yes. But what God is doing is He is hiding you and He's preserving you for your chosen season. And so, you know, it's just been a blessing to really have you here to hopefully minister to someone who God may be dealing with about writing, about being a scribe, a prophetic scribe, about being the mouthpiece of the Father. And so, if someone was looking to get in contact with you, how would they be able to reach you? We have a website, www.f4nations.com. Okay. F, the number four nations.com. Email address is info at f4nations.com. Also, a Facebook page, Demonte Edmonds. Okay, and uh, Apostle Edmonds, he's going to be with us at the Worship Arts Conference that's going to be held on March 31st at Bishop Sullivan Arts 5 Theater. On April 1st, we're going to be at Mary D. Pretlow Library, and he's going to be one of our facilitators for prophetic writing. So if you want to hear more about prophetic writing, maybe you want to hear about how to get your prophetic writings published. Maybe you've already gone through your wilderness. Maybe your dry season is coming to an end, and God is saying, okay, now it's time for the release. Now it's time for you to do something that God has always been telling you to do. It's time for uh, your public revelation to come forth for the world. He said he had called us to be a what? A prophet to the nations. And maybe you're in that season right now, but you don't know how to get started. We invite you to register.